Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the latest questions that were asked in Capgemini. Before we get started, you know, let us thank a subscriber who has shared us this question so that it can be of help to others who are preparing. So dear uh, subscriber, thank you for sharing these questions and your experience. So to get started, uh, this were for L L1 level, okay? And uh, the first question that was asked was, Tell me about yourself. Now we have, you know, repeatedly, you know, dis uh, we're discussing about this question that is being asked in every company. So earlier I have given you a detailed description for this question in almost every video. Back then, you know, we were not using chat GPT actively. Now what is happening is a trend has evolved. And everyone is using chat GPT to get their answers or, you know, they fine tune their answers. Now you are also in the same race of using chat GPT to find out this and, you know, fine tuning whatever the, you know, your rough note was. Now, how will you make this difference compared to others? Because the interviewer, suppose I am the interviewer and I am asking you this question and I will be asking the same questions to many others who are attending the interview. So he will also be giving the answer from chat GPT. You will also be giving chat GPT answer from chat GPT. How will you make it different from others? Okay, the only thing we can do here is add some human touch to it. It should not look like, you know, you are, you know, mugging up or, you know, you have by hearted the entire description. Okay, it should not, it should never be look. Try to make it in a, you know, conversation way, like, you know, you are talking about something, you know, your description should always be conversational, you know, it should uh create some, you know, uh, curiosity to the interviewer that, okay, this guy is talking something more of a natural language, not uh, something uh, which is out of chat GPT, right? Now, even interviewer is uh, aware of that. So keep this in mind when you are trying to answer about, tell me about yourself, because it has become very redundant that I'm saying this in many candidates who are attending interview. So try to have a human touch Try to be very generic, or uh, you know, try to be, uh, try to explain what you have done rather than you know mugging up and giving the answer. It is not like question to answer. It is more about sharing your experience, right? So I am Rahul Power. I have you know so and so use of experience as a Tableau developer, where I have worked in different domains, like say financial, uh, banking, and insurance domain. In my last project. You know, like say, or you, or you can add, like, you know, currently I'm working for so and so company where my current project deals with insurance project. And in this project, we are trying to solve uh, some problem uh, above to the client. And we, are cre we have created few metrics that will answer those problems. Something like that you can, you know, talk about in generic so that, you know, it should make your answer authentic. Okay. So, Remember this point, you know, guys, you know, um, do let me know if you, you know, agree with this or you know, comment it in the comment section so that, you know, I will know what you are feeling about that. And, you know, everyone who is reading the comment will know how this answer is shaping up. So why I have spent so much of time on this question is because this is the first question and often the most uh, uh, question that will get, uh, that will uh, what you call, you know, lead the candidate for getting rejection. Okay. So let me know if you need a dedicated help uh, on this or a dedicated video on this. We will discuss how we can make our description authentic, you know, not like using chat GPT and all. We'll try to make it authentic. Okay. Do let me know in the comment section. Second one is day to day activities. So when, when, it, when it comes to day, day to day activities, so what do you do as soon as we log in is we check for our emails. You know, do we have any specific communications from the client on the project that we are uh, working? So if there are any, we try to you know work on that, uh, work on assigned tasks for that particular day. Okay, we'll get on with the stand-up meetings or scrum calls obviously most of your evenings or most of the second half of your day 
will go in the meetings this meetings can be internal meetings within your team or it can be external like you know connecting with client and showing your progress it can be anything but this is what happens in your day to day activity apart from this you know if you are working on a regular work you will you know continue and work and complete the assigned task so this is what will happen so you also need to uh, remember where you are with respect to your current project like you are in development phase or you are in testing phase or you are in migration phase you know it can be anything based on that you need to tackle your work and all or sometimes you know we all might also be working you know scrum uh, based where you know we need to complete some task based on that timelines that is given like say 30 to 30 days of work is there okay in this 30 days you were assigned a project okay now no one will come or give you every day some task in this 30 days your role is to develop the project or develop the dashboard test the dashboard create <clears throat> testing document all of that you need to do okay so once that is done you have to move it to qa environment where you know testing team will come into picture and they will validate the dashboard now once that is done you know by the close of the month or by the close of the scrum you know those reports will be moved to production so all of this will happen in the specific timeline that is being given okay so you need to you can talk about this whenever you know you are being asked like what are your day-to-day -day activities okay so explain any one project now this many of as might know but all those i still see struggling you know you cannot again mug up or you know by heart it we need to create one dashboard we need to create one dashboard from scratch that is when you will know end to end about this otherwise trust me you might again prepare this from chat gpt you know, chat GPT also can give you, but the way of your answering, the way of your explanation will purely depend on how well uh, you, know, you are preparing and how well are you articulating whatever you have prepared. You should be confident, you know, you should be able to explain the scenario okay so try to do it from the scratch you will gain a lot of confidence trust me it will help you a lot so when i say scratch not only creating dashboard directly you know take one data set new data set or sample superstore up to you i leave it okay take one data set do some data manipulation on that try to create some kpis on top of that okay also have the problem statement defined for that data set so that you know what you will answer on the dashboard right basing on that you will create kpis you will create dashboards and you will answer that now when you create this end to end you will have clear understanding like you know what was my data source now what was the problem in that what kind of manipulation i have done on the data what was there any redundant data was there any duplicate data how did you handle so you had a single table or multiple tables all of this you will have clear you know idea and clear information when you get questions related to project this type of things will automatically you will be able to answer that's why i always say you know create one dashboard or create two dashboard from the scratch you know asking chat gpt directly it will give you kpis you know directly it will give you you know metrics directly it will give you calculations that is fine but unless and until you don't do it you will not be able to answer cross questions that might arise okay so try to do that okay and uh, next is how do you gather requirements from the client okay so whenever we co connect with the client we try to 
ask you know what is the problem statement okay so what are the tables that are available what is that we need to consider in this okay like data number of years you no know, field that we need to connect basing on that we create mapping document or you know business requirement document and then we try to you know create low level document on top of the business document that we have created so we call it as lld okay low level documentation so during this requirement phase we try to understand what does a client need what is the functionality he is expecting in the dashboard okay so what are the metrics he is looking for okay apart from that is there any specific interactivity he wants to see what kind of user filters he wants to see he wants to see on the dashboard right like say region is there do he does he wants you know values to be displayed on the dashboard so that he can filter or actions or parameters you know basing on that we try to ask as many questions or as possible or when you connect with the, the client client first he will try to explain you what he needs basing on that conversation you can start asking the questions that you need if there are if there is any specific questions you can ask if not you can just try to understand with with the documentation or with the explanation he has given and try to come up with the rough to dashboard i hope this has helped you next is explain one scenario of lod which you have used in your project now lod expressions are one of the most powerful calculations of tableau we all know right if we are dealing with the granularity of data and we need specific information at a specific level level then in that situations lods are most helpful like i want to find out first order last order or total sales max of sale max of sale or sale or whatever you know that can at a table level or at specific level of dimension if you are trying to categorize okay or your view is at a different level of granularity and you need an information at a different granularity for all such purpose lods are very helpful maybe for this kind of questions you can use chat gpt and try to see what are the different things but we have already solved multiple scenarios on lods you can try to find out like first order of the customer second order of the customer nth order of the customer and all so all of those are some scenarios that you can always talk in interview like say first order per customer or average order per customer or last order per customer or customer is active or inactive like that new customer or existing customer all these kind of questions can be answered using lod expressions okay remember this this is a very helpful and very useful and very important calculation in tableau next is how do you improve performance of a report always ensure you are using integer type calculations or integer type parameters and you can also use the performance option in the uh, tableau server that is available to check how you use your performance is tableau re recommending you any changes you can always do that that is something that you can consider or you can also do performance recording so that you will know where 
is the bottleneck in your dashboard basing on which you can take necessary action so that is something that you can do when ax next question was when accessing tableau dashboard performance the average opening time and user exp expectation uh help determine if a report is fast or slow see like you know if a report is loading in two seconds or three seconds and all we can consider that as a fast anything above five or 10 seconds it is taking it is considered as a slow report okay it depends on multiple tasks you know how fast is your server how uh, what is the volume of your data how you have created the dashboard basing on all of that this question can be you know uh, improved or answered next is full and incremental refresh so when we are scheduling uh, extracts we have an option called as incremental refresh and full refresh full refresh means it will recreate your extracts right like suppose 100 records are there and tomorrow when it is running the extract again so this full the entire 100 records will be deleted and a new ex new extract will be created whereas incremental refreshment suppose 100 records are there you got again 10 new records in that which is 110 now only 10 records will be added to the existing uh, you know file that is already available now this can be done on any primary key that is available in your database like say it can be on ids or on dates basing on which you can decide now next question was given scenario and asked to perform inner left and right join now generally this type of question is coming where they are asking or you know you to write a simple you know statement using joins like they they want to change check if you know uh, how to write join or not so try to you know, learn this next is different between union and union all so one we all know difference between this and this but again union and union all one will keep duplicate value and another will, will eliminate duplicate value that is the only difference apart from that what we need to remember is this structure okay so the two tables that we are using let's say i'm using select star from emp union again select star from emp right so here the structure of my this table is same this table is same same right so always ensure the two tables that you are using have the same structure that is when your union will work effectively otherwise it might throw throw error like say example from this table you are getting 10 columns whereas from this table you are getting nine columns let me know what will be the error when you see this type of data okay different between delete and truncate so there are three things that are available delete drop and truncate so delete always works with where clause like say delete from table name where condition where like say department number is equal to 20 truncate table table name so this will delete the entire data from the table okay whereas drop will also delete but it will also delete the table structure so that is the difference between delete drop and truncate i hope this video was helpful do let me know in the comment section what you feel about this okay and i'll come up with the level two in the mid of this week see you in the next video till then bye bye and have a good day